All right, here we go. I think it's happening. Um, thank you also be, for being here. Um, I'm a little bit nervous. I've never really done this before. I'm used to in-person events uh, and, and having a connection with the audience, but obviously in the wake of things, that's not happening now, but I really had this need for connection and to, to share this story. And um, part of this book, of course, but just to, to be with friends. For me, happy hour has always been something that's really important, right? And I've done happy hour over tea and over hikes and bike rides and runs and yoga and certainly at bars with friends. But it's when, in my family too, and it's, it's when we connect. It's when we catch up, right? It's when we hear about the big victories and, and the small ones too. And uh, we really just get to to relax and kick back and maybe for a little bit forget about the world around us, which um, right now that that's hard to do, but also important to, to connect to the things that matters. And um, for those of you that don't know, today was the official release of my first book, um, Step Up, How to Live with Courage and Become an Everyday Leader. And I um, am thrilled that it's out in the world, a little bit scared, but mostly thrilled that I've gotten the most amazing texts from friends of mine. Um, you know, everything from it arrived today and I sanitized it completely to a picture with a kid with an Amazon box on their head to stacks that my in-laws have and from my aunt and, and so much love from my family and, and friends. And I, I couldn't be more grateful. So um, hopefully we can we can take this time as a moment to to celebrate being being together and, and having community um and 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 really find the the lightness maybe and find the power in each of us to to get through and again i've i've never done this before this is kind of the first attempt at being live so i'm going to try to follow the comments but um if the dog comes in and barks or my son bops in or whatever that looks like um just uh cut me a little bit of slack maybe or or and, and certainly interact right um in in the comments section that's that's what we're here here to do. I certainly miss seeing seeing all of your faces, but look forward to doing it again um, sometime soon. So uh, let's get we'll get through the book part, and then we can we can just catch up and maybe do a Q and A. Um, when I was going to do in person events, I kind of look through you know what do people ask, what do they want to know from from authors, and and a lot of times you know it's the the basics, and I don't even at this point consider myself um, a writer. I, I had some really great people. Um, as part of the team that, that helped me bring it together and, and, and make it happen and, and really just get my ideas out of my brain and onto paper. So uh, I think to, to kind of look at what the, the book looks like and, and where it came from, um, I had spent a lot of time um, after the TED Talks had gained some traction uh, speaking with, with people, corporations, universities um, around giving voice to your truth, really taking that message that's inside of you and getting it out into the world and, and that you are an expert on being you and that is so hugely important and the world needs that um, because you've paved the way in so many ways and that you can lead from where you where you are. Uh, and, and I took that message out and, and it resonated to a certain extent, but there was this kind of sentiment that leadership was something you were born with, right? Or, or a position that you aspired too. It, 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 you either had it or you didn't, you, you know, it's a, maybe a personality trait, but, but then I saw these people doing these courageous things, these, these leadership things that they, they didn't think twice about, you know, it's a, a parent in the middle of a late meeting. And instead of saying, no, I have to go, you know, check outside or, or go to the bathroom or whatever I have to do, they would stop and say, Hey, I got to go say goodnight to my kids. They were fully honest, fully authentic, fully themselves. And, and, and that to me is an act of leadership. That's giving people in the room permission to be exactly who they are. Um, and, and that's what we, we need so much of now. And, but people didn't see themselves as, as leaders in that way. Um, a good friend of mine, Nikki Rivera, said it uh, one time so perfectly is that um, at her company, they don't look at leadership as a position, but rather a disposition, that, that you have the power to, to lead as one by example, right? It's not based on how many direct reports you have or, or what your salary is or the car that you drive, but that, that you can be an example every day in the way that you treat people and the way that you interact. And, and that that was 
I wanted that to be so approachable, right? And, and that anybody could do it, whether you were the captain of your middle school soccer team or, or the CEO of a Fortune 50 company. I feel like those are traits that we can all possess. So when I looked at these approachable traits, I knew it was important to, to really figure out what are things that people do in their everyday lives, right? That they want to be better at and, and that if I'm going to be fully authentic, the person I am with my son should be the same as the person I am with my client should be the same as the person I am with the barista at the coffee shop, right? That, that I act with that integrity every day. Um, and so what some of those things were, um, again, the, the, it didn't, you know, you didn't have to have an MBA, you didn't have to be in the C-suite to be able to have these things, things like empathy, responsibility, courage, grace, individuality, humility, patience, and authenticity, right? If you, if I look at any of the moms that I know, any of the dads that I know, any of the people that, that I feel close to in my life, they possess all of those things to, to a certain level. It's, it's just sometimes it's, you know, behind closed doors, but when we can practice those traits regularly, it really gives us the ability to, to connect with other people. And again, be the, be that example, right? That, that we're not, leading so people will do what we say right or so they'll follow us but so people genuinely want to hear more from us that they they want to follow us right that it's a desire because the life that we're living or the way that we treat people is something that they aspire to attain so so that is is kind of this idea of leadership to me that's very different than the way it's been shown or displayed or written about in the past and so that's 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 what the book is about and, and, and where it came from and the idea of step up the title came from the this fact that it that it takes action that we have to really we have to do something to to be able to be a leader so we can lead from exactly where we are but but to change and, and broaden our influence and our ability to affect other people is that we have to make changes we have to be willing to be uncomfortable regularly to be able to grow in that way and, and, and not be afraid of failure or afraid of, you know, not being perfect every time we do it, right? We're looking for progress, not perfection. So we need to be able to move in these directions effectively. Um, and, and to do that, we, there has to be movement, right? We, we can't exact, expect the world to adapt around us. We have to adapt to the situation that we're in. Like so many of us are, are practicing that right now, right? We, we change, we adapt, we're flexible people because we have to be. We never know who's gonna walk in our office door, or who's gonna who, who's gonna be the, the other coach on the soccer team, right? They're, we don't know who we're gonna interact with, and so we have to be agile enough to adapt to the situation that we have with, with a confidence and a, and a self-certainty um, to be able to proceed genuinely exactly who we are. So uh, that, that idea of, of, of movement, that it causes, that it requires movement, that it requires a, a change is pretty fundamental to the book. And as you go through with, with each of those pillars that I listed off, there's, you know, kind of a summary of these, these takeaways, cliff notes, if you will. Anybody who knew me in high school knew I was a big fan of those. Um, but but that's short synopsis, but then also a challenge that, that we challenge ourselves to grow every day. If, if we're not feeling a little bit uncomfortable, that feeling in the in the pit of our stomach that we're doing something we haven't done before, then we're really missing an opportunity to grow. And that's what leadership requires for us to grow into this fullest version of ourselves, who who we actually are. So um, that idea of, of embracing change and embracing discomfort is, um, is, is fundamental to the book. Um, and, and the everyday leader part, so the name of the book, the full name is um, Step Up, How to Live with Courage and Become an Everyday Leader. And, and the courage is kind of ex an extension of what I just talked about, um, that we most certainly have to be brave enough to do the harder thing, right? That, and that we can be brave and scared at the same time, right? Brene Brown refers to that all the time, that we can be, we, if we're not, we're not using our courage, we're not displaying courage if if we have no no fear of what we're doing it means we're not trying something new and there's nothing too brave about that right it, it's that idea of, of pushing ourselves so courage is, is fundamental um but then to be an everyday leader is is a little bit more complex it's um 
A, it's something that we do every day. So it's a regular, it's, it's something we practice. It's something we approve on. In every situation that we're in, we have the opportunity to lead. Sometimes we seize on it, sometimes we don't, but the opportunities are always there. So how do we as leaders fully embrace those opportunities and take advantage of those, again, every day? Not just in our job or not just in places where we feel comfortable or, or places where we have the authority to be a leader, but, but to kind of seize that and know that our leadership is needed everywhere all the time. And sometimes as a leader, that means just sitting back and taking it in or empowering somebody else's voice, right? It doesn't mean that we are the first person to grab the mic, right? Sometimes we're the one to amplify other voices, but that we, we seize those opportunities to lead Every day, there's no situation that's that's too small for us to be able to, to practice that. That's one of the most important parts of it, is the, the regular everydayness of it, but that every single person has this innate ability to lead, this, this unique perspective that they bring because they're the expert on their human experience, and, and we are better as a people if we know what those human experiences are like, right? That that, that makes them an expert. So... That, that everydayness is, is the things that we see as, you know, m- menial or that we take for granted or, or just assume that we're going to do. That's my son, Luke, in the background, giving his two cents on my leadership style. Um, but, I, but I think the most important part is that th- we find ourselves right now, you know, in the last two weeks, in these situations we had never seen ourselves in before. And, and a, a lot of us, you, you know, you just... You just do this thing, right? You just put your head down and, and do it. But you know, in, the, in these new challenges that come to us, but you know, I think of everyday leaders as my friend Jamie Norton, who's a nurse, who is going in every day, putting herself in an unhealthy situation because that's her job and that's what she's committed to, and she's committed to taking care of people, and that's what she does. If our first responders and the people in the front lines of our medical field right now are not leaders every day, then I, I guess I don't know who is. But at the same time, it's, you know, the, the folks that are restocking the shelves any at, at Target, right, who, who smile when you check out, who have been asked 5,000 times where the hand sanitizer is, right? But these folks are at work doing their job because they need to and, and they're helping us for it, right? Uh, and, and Or it's the, you know, Two parents that are used to working that are now at home that are tackling homeschooling for the first time and really realizing how incredibly important that is and and how do we connect with our kids and and take advantage of and and seize the opportunity of this time of being together as a family and, and it's hard and you know we're all working odd hours and late nights to get it all done but but those are important connections too, or somebody that's always homeschooled their kids that now all of a sudden, you know, is, is, you know, wants to respond maybe smugly of, hey, it's not as easy as you thought it was, right? But also is, is giving the curriculums that they've developed to the broader community solely for the fact that it's for the greater good, right? Those are everyday leaders. There's, there's dozens of them. If, as you think of more, please post it to me on social media. I want to every day highlight people that are doing what we consider normal, everyday tasks, but the way that they do it and, and that they bring their full selves to it, to me, defines the fact that they're, they're leaders as well. Um, and, and when we are in this role, you know, it, it changes. If, for those of us that, that love to connect with people personally, like I love a, you know, a big, strong hug or a, a firm handshake or a high five, physical connection is, is just so important to me especially in the work that I do and, and to not have that is hard, but there are still these ways to connect, whether it's, you know, virtual happy hours or seeing friends, or we had a party for a, a buddy's kid uh, and just saying happy birthday over Zoom. There are these, there are these ways to connect and, and maintain that connection that's so incredibly important because as humans, we need to feel that bond. We need to feel that we're not alone. And again, it's just not the people that you know. There, there are ways to get involved with, you know, nursing homes or, 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 or different areas where you can connect to, to people and listen and, and hear their stories. And sometimes it's just walking down the street and you smile at somebody, right? Right now, smiling at someone else, connecting with someone else is an act of bravery. So don't underestimate that, that these acts of kindness are, are ways to genuinely 
connect to people, share what your kids are, are doing in school on social media, media, share your failures, share your incredible successes, share it all because that's where that's the, the basis of authenticity, right? Is that none of us know what we're doing. We've never done this before, but we have this collective consciousness of, of sharing these ideas where, where we can get through it together. That, that if, if I solve a problem, I, I want other people to be able to do that too. It's kind of, you know, for us, we have a two-year-old at home and juggling work schedules, and we have an incredible nanny a few days a week, but we're really trying to figure it out. And if I have a mini success, like, I want everybody in the world to know about it so they don't have to have the same struggles I do. So so take those opportunities to to connect and share. And, and it's it's a stressful time work-wise for everyone, right? Whatever you do, it is it is hard. And so we need these moments to feel like we're not the only one facing the challenges we have. We're not the only ones that are that are alone. Um, so, okay, next question. Um, what do uh, what do I love about the book? Um, that's that's it's that's a tough one for me. I mean, I I love it because I think it's approachable. I think of of me as a you know kid that wanted to be the captain of the basketball team and you know, barely, barely made the team and sat on the far end of the bench on the other side of the trainers most of the time. But, but I loved the sport and I loved my team and, and, and saw that, you know, you don't need a designation to be a captain, to be a leader, right? That you just do what you do really, really well. And it has an impact. I was a terrible basketball player. Um, my mom would debate that, but it's true. I was. And uh, but all I could do was play defense, right? I didn't have the skills, but defense is really just hustling, out hustling the person you're playing against, right? And so that's what I was good at. And so my role on the team became prepping our starters for who we were going to play. And, and that's not, you know, nobody wrote about that in the papers, but that's, that's what I did. And, and I took such pride in that. And, and my thought is that, you know, hopefully little me would read this book and, and know that that individuality, that fullest version of myself has value and, and matters on the on the on the team and, and that that is additive right hey buddy my son Luke wants to say hi can you say hi bud? hi having a little bit of milk can we cheers cheers am I you no you don't want me on it nope um, there we go. So the so that that's I guess what I love about the book, which kind of goes to the next question of who is this for? And I guess my thought would be that it's for it's for anybody that wants to be a a truer, more authentic version of themselves. That that they that they just maybe don't know the tools or have never seen the skill set that they have highlighted and and know that that brings value. And then also that you know, once you start to appreciate the things like empathy, responsibility, humility as these traits, not only do we display them, and in our roles as leaders, people pick up on that, but also we empower other people to, to do the same, that there isn't this cookie cutter version of, of leadership. And what we need now more than ever is for people to lead from exactly where they are. Whatever they're doing, whatever their strengths are, are vital to us getting through this. Everybody has a role to play and your role, your role might be trying to convince your friends to stop going out, right? Your role might be sewing masks. Your role might be on the front lines, wherever you are, you have a role to, to play in this and, and your value, that value needs to be understood. And then again, you empower other people to, to take on those authentic traits and bring those to the table too. Um, and so I, I feel like that is, is who I want to, to read this book, is, is somebody who maybe dabbles in leadership, wants to be a leader, but doesn't feel like they have the position or the age or the experience to do it. And I think those are all things that, that hold us back. And as a society, we're, we're less because people can't, can't fully step up from, from where they are. Uh, and then what part are you seeking the most proud of? The part of the book that was the the best for me was writing the acknowledgments. I don't. It's. A, I've, I've never really done anything like that before. Um, and just to sit down and and really take time 
to recognize the, the people that have brought you to where you are to the point of writing the book. Um, if you have an opportunity, regardless of if it's a book or not, but just, just look back on, on life. And where you are right now and and the people that made an impact on that is is a is a perfect act of gratitude to practice right now um it's it's people that i haven't seen in years people that i see every day it's um it's something that's really passionate to me i've never really read the acknowledgements right you get to the end of the book and that's pretty much pretty much it you close it up and and now i read them all the time now because um and certainly not everybody takes them like I do, or if it's more academic, that doesn't matter as, or it does, maybe it's not as passionate, but for me, it's, it's something that's important. It gives you this glimpse into the, the writer's, the writer's life. And you don't know the, the names, but the connection matters. And I know that there's people that I've forgotten and I'm, I feel terrible about that or that I didn't name specifically. Um, but it's, it truly is an amazing act to, to sit down and, and write out um, the people that you're grateful to and for all the things that mattered and, and you go through this kind of mental list of um, stories and experiences and laughs and tears and, and all the things that you've shared for so long um, you know and the professional people are in there too and, and they're incredibly important to this actually being a book but it was the, the personal ones that was, were, were so fun that made me feel so, so connected so if you have a chance um write it out and then um I would I would share that with people especially now people want to know more now more than ever how much they mean to you even if you haven't talked to them in in years that would be for me a, a really fun practice um um and then the last one is what do I hope this book can impart on its readers and to me it's um I think uh hope and uh promise and um, inspiration, and again, not to be like I, I don't I don't know the answers, right? I just know the questions that I've answered that got me to where I am, and, and that's what I that's what I try to share, right? There's there's no there's nothing about me that's going to tell you the way, right? My role as leader and, and our role as leaders is, is to give people the tools to make their own way, right? That's that's this piece of authentic leadership is is giving people the the capacity and the understanding and the empowerment to be the best version of themselves, and and that's not by following our path, right? That's by breaking off on on their own whenever they're ready. So um, I guess that would that would be it. That that everybody can do this. Anybody can do this. We need you to do this. Uh, the world is a better place if you do. Um, so that, I guess that would be my hope. So. All right, we're like 25 minutes in. I should try to keep a decent time frame. Also, I don't know if we even got there, but I do have a beer. I haven't been having it. Local one from Upslo um, in Colorado. Um, but uh, raise, a, raise a glass, sippy cup, whatever it might be, to, to the fact that we're, we're all in this together and that we, we need each other and, and we need you to be the, the strongest version of yourself right now. Um, and, and the best part is that we have um, endless opportunities to improve, right? We have these opportunities to be leaders every day. And, and again, you don't have to get it right. Nobody expects you to get it right every time. You don't, you know, that's why you get more than one strike, right? You, you got to swing a couple times to, to figure it out. And if you're not doing it wrong, if you're not making mistakes, then you're not, you're not pushing yourself and you're not going to grow as a leader. So, um, it's, I guess it's, raise a glass of stepping up would be would be my thought so i'm going to try to figure out these comments i'm not again super great at this but i'm going to work it out um if anybody's got any questions just shoot them my way oh my god there's my old buddy sue uh center fielder on my high school softball team love it um uh, let's see who's on there oh here's a great i'm just going to read these um oh good uh hopefully that lasts there on the instagram thing um, change often takes place. This is Rebecca Ann. Change often takes place in discomfort, growth in places of unknown. Ooh, I like that. That one's awesome. Um, let's see who's in here. Um, oh my God. My cousin, my sister-in-law. It's great. Uh, 
Let's see. I'm just trying to get through these. Hey, from Los Angeles. Um, oh, from Floyd, Virginia. Hey, Loretta. Um, ooh, here, this is my sister-in-law. Uh, being a leader in the workplace is hard right now. Any tips on leading remotely and connecting via text or these Zoom times? Um, great question. And I know that Deborah is a fantastic leader. Um, I think that it's creating an environment in, in teams more than anything where there's trust, right? The reason that we, we don't work remotely or we, we have this idea that we have to be in the same office is, is this connection, right? It's the, the water cooler conversations. It's what I'm so jealous that my wife has that I don't have working from home, right? It, it just does, you just, life exists in between offices on, on walks to, to get coffee, right? That's where the real connection happens. So, so how do we do that? And, and I think we will lay down um, some, some ideas and some ways to build trust. And I think at the same time, for me, in purse, oh, shoot, thanks. That's my sister telling me that my video is paused. Awesome. Okay, thanks, man. Um, sorry, Instagram. So the so so i think we we build trust and i think that that comes from a combination of flexibility and accountability right so we need to trust that our workers our co-workers are, are doing what they're supposed to be doing um and and maintaining despite all the chaos that's happening around us maintaining their um their job their duties their responsibilities to to one another because we can't you know, just walk around to the cube next door and, and see what somebody's doing. We have to really dial into it. So uh, I think creating, whether that's um, like shared document accountabilities, accountabilities at the end of every week, that this is more like the the brain data side of it, right? That, that we are really reporting back on these issues because we want to A, show our coworkers that we are accountable and that this there's nothing that we've lost in this flex workspace so accountability is one piece, but then I think flexibility is super important. I mean, it's just getting work done with somebody with extra heartbeats in the house is challenging. And so how do we create time frames or more effective ways to, uh, to make the meetings count, right? Do we schedule a 10 a.m. meeting every day or every other day? So it's on everybody's schedule. Um, to me, the, the in-person Zoom versions of it are, are so critical because you just need to see somebody's face, you need to see facial expressions. Like when you're used to having that connection and you no longer have it, it just doesn't it just doesn't seem to work. It's it's hard to build trust to me without without seeing somebody and in, in interacting with them. Um, but I think the, that regularity, but knowing that there might be some flexibility, and as a team, we come together to to most effectively um agree to the conditions that we can agree on um i think also m more times than we probably ever have in the past as leader it's really our responsibility to to make sure that our coworkers are okay not with their workload right with their life um with their spouses do they have what they need to do the job that they're trying to do from home if not how can we get them those tools right how do we structure the day so that more um, closely aligns with what their needs are. How do we just kind of, how do we check in? And then I think the, the final thing that we would do is, as leaders in, in chaos, um, which is what this is right now, is, is have that self-certainty uh, around what's this going to look like when we get through this, right? The, the question can't be, are we going to get through this? We will get through this. We'll figure it out how to do it together. And then what does that look like on the other side? How do we keep everybody collectively focused on the desire to not only survive, but thrive in this moment and then move forward, right? What, what do we do when, when we get through it, when we get through it together? So I think um, those are some, some key things that you, we can look at as, as leaders to, to really making our coworkers and our employees feel heard, um, feel uh, listen to for their individuality and their unique experience um, and, and really use the, the full weight of the leadership that we possess to create environments where all of our um, oh, all of our staff can thrive. Um, let's see. I'm going to keep going. Um, recent, oh, hard is hard shirts again. Oh, 
Um, so when I first did my uh, TED Talk, I did um, Hard is Hard uh, t-shirts, and I do have some of those left. If you want to shoot me a uh, email, ash at ashbeckham.com, I can hook you up with the um, Hard is Hard t-shirt and get those out to you and, and figure out a way to get those back on on my new website, that would be huge. Um, so I'm excited to do that. Um, let me see, does anybody else, where are we? Are we 15 minutes left? Do I have something else to say? Um, uh, let's see, some other some other ideas of, of ways to really be mindful uh, right now is obviously supporting local businesses. Um, supporting local bookstores is, is huge. I'm trying to get a list of um, all the local bookstores, independent bookstores throughout the country that have step up um, and figure out a way to get them signed copies um, to, to give a little extra bonus to anybody um, who's supporting local bookstores. They're, from the ones that I've seen, they're really going out of their way, whether that's um, curbside pickup, limiting the number of people in the store, any of that, that's, that's something obviously uh, that's huge that we can do. Um, local restaurants, if anybody else has any other um, campaigns that they've seen out that are supporting local businesses. I was um, raised by two entrepreneurs and, and I, although I probably didn't know this as a kid, I think looking back on it, something like this would have been really tough on our family. Um, that's just, that's what we did. That's where our income came from, were from, from local businesses and the support of local people. And, and obviously overextending past where you're comfortable um, in your current state of uh, current state of quarantine is one thing, but if you um, most effectively can use those ways to, to get out and, and, and support local businesses, I think that that's great. Um, I also feel like for those of you that can and are willing to, oh my God, did it pause again? Um, for those of you that are that are willing to volunteer, I know there's opportunities that are out there, or you know, just call call your buddies and see who needs something from the store. If if you know you're going, if you're in a position where you can do that, drop it on the front porch and and give a wave. I feel like the you know the fewer people we can get out, the better. But there's still things that need to be done, and so how do we most how do we most effectively do that? I think you know checking on your neighbors is 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 pretty key too, especially the ones that are at high at risk groups. Um, and again, as much as that, just that connection, I think is huge. Um, let's see. Okay. All right. This is from Chloe. She's on the marketing team with the publisher. So she always has thoughtful insights. Um, like a lot of folks, I feel thankful to be able to work from home right now. However, I feel stuck on how to check in and support others who may not be able to work right now and feel lost. How can support and connection in a way that serves you think um yeah how yeah in in the same way that you know we're not doing you don't realize till you can't how important that connection is i feel like so um i think we use technology to the to best of our ability we are certainly um far exceeding our screen time with our son but it's important that he sees his mimi and his papa and his aunts and uncles and cousins right um and friends of ours and all of that so i feel like uh the most effective way uh to to support is just to be there and again just ask people what they what they need what what can you do and and knowing that you you can't do much right i um i've been to enough therapy to to know that one of my shortcomings is that being a uh, trying to be a fixer, um, and that is, is, is a tough mentality to have. You, you just want to be, you want to be a helper, right, in, in whatever that needs, and it, and it might be, hey, can you FaceTime with my daughter while she has breakfast so I can jump in the shower, right? Like these, these really simple things, you know, like I want to like, me personally, I want to like lift things and move things and carry things, right? it like makes me feel helpful, but I think um, a lot of times that's, you got to know what people need and the only way you're going to know is if you ask and you ask knowing you might not be able to give it right you have to be able to say now and kind of hold those boundaries and, and and facilitate it as quickly as possible you can only give what you can give in this in this scenario right now um but don't don't let your inability to do what you think they need prevent you from asking what they do need i i think and 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 really dial into um 
the little things, the little connections, the, the, you know, text in the morning, the text at night, the whatever that, whatever that might be, I think is, is super important. Um, and then I think like any, any tragedy, right? Like when people get back to their lives, they're still going to need help. That friend that's been out of work for a month is, is still going to need that connection when everything's back to normal, right? So how are we mindful that what the end looks like for one of us isn't the end of this for all of us, right? So we have to kind of take off our, that's this empathy piece is, is taking off our own lens and taking a moment to see what it's like to be somebody else that whatever, the, the, you know, whenever we start rolling back these restrictions, there are going to be some people that because of their health situation are still restricted for their best interest, right? And so how do we maintain connection to those people when, and, and not leave them behind and, and not pretend, well, it's over for me. My job started again. The Major League Baseball season is going again, right? The festival I wanted to go to is still happening. When when all of those things start to happen, there's still people that are going to have to scale back and, and we've got to keep those people in, in mind um, throughout this, throughout everything. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see. Um, and I think it's, you know, I, I think that's super, something that's super important is to be able to, uh, really use the platforms that we have to, to advocate for the things that are important to us, that, that we, you know, we don't just jump on Twitter and retweet the, the, the bad news or political news or whatever that looks like, that, that we're really using this time to create content that is authentic, that brings joy to the world. And I know we get like caught up, I don't care what, which news channel, which side of the aisle you're on, right? There's every, there's very, very little good news right now. And so how do we curate content that brings joy? And that might, might just be me taking a picture of my son on a walk today and sending it to my mom, knowing that that's going to make her face light up, right? And that might be writing a poem, and that might be singing a song, or that might be creating some sort of social movement uh, like they've been doing in other countries, where at a certain time of night, everybody goes outside and applauds their healthcare workers, right? Like We, we all have this ability to, to create joy and create connection and then share that connection and broaden it. And so I feel like Again, right now, as leaders, we have a responsibility to do that, to, to, to find the, the light and the joy and, and really make sure the rest of the world sees that too. We know, you know, we know how dark it can get. It's not tough to go down a rabbit hole on this one, but, but we really need to be, be mindful of the fact that how many people we can impact with the lightness that we bring. So um, that would be just a, just a suggestion of, you know, when, when we get caught up in the, in the whirlwind of it, I think that's something that's critical to, to, to keep in mind. Um, I also think, uh, that it's, although this is a little bit challenging, um, I think we really can look at it as an opportunity, um, to connect with our family members, right? We've never been in this close proximity for this amount of time, um, ever. And so, but how do we kind of, how do we take those moments to actually have lunch together? Um, how do we take those moments to prepare dinner together, to do the things that are, um, that are again, fun and joyful? How do we, how do we find that lightness so easily in, um, in the world? And again, it's not, it's not tough when the emails are piling up or the bills are piling up or whichever external pressures are piling up. But I think the the thing that's that's important is to really kind of seize on those moments. We're so so rarely do we take advantage of the fact that we're forced to slow down, and when we do, it's it's unsettling. It's not the speed at which we operate, and and so we want to get back to the way things were, and and, and it will eventually. But I, I I know that whatever five months from now. I would do almost anything to have my wife and my son at home and be able to sit down and have a grilled cheese together. Um, 
you know, and, and maybe that's a carryover, right? That we, we hold on to some of these moments and, 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 and make ourselves take the time to, to recreate them. I feel like my dog has gotten more walks in the last week than she probably has in two years um, in, in any given week because we, you just, we want to be outside, you want to move, you want to get, get space, you want to breathe fresh air to the best of your ability. We're lucky that that's something that we can, we can do here, but you know, to, to really savor the richness of that, I think is, is pretty key. Um, so I, I, I think, um, and I guess an, another, another thing that would, would be important is that there's businesses that are, uh, closing down or shutting down completely, you know, we can't all just go donate and try to keep these places in business, right? But but we can send our appreciation and, and we can send our our love and we can support them in, in the best way that that we know how. And so I think again that that's if you've figured out a way to to help and support a local business, that's another thing that we can we can um, we can you can post online that you can share with people that you can bring that that knowledge there and um, to be able to take our uh, to be able to take again our our influence and our impact and and be able to give a shout out to those businesses or 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 and that's a great thing about small businesses is that they're so oh there we go oh back okay they're so they're so creative that's what entrepreneurs do right that's like why why they do what they do is is to be creative and to be unique and 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 so they're all they're, everybody's coming up with ways to try to to make it work. And so again, if you see something that's working, it can be a shared idea. Let's let's make it work for for everybody. Um, and then I'll just do one, I guess, one kind of final closing thought on on things that we can do uh, this time. And I would say because of the book, um, take time to read. Right? Like we can put our phones down. We can take time to to be quiet and and do that do that thing share that skill that um, you know learn how to play the guitar uh, so uh, any of those things that you've always wanted to do but you just haven't had enough time at home a lot of time <laughs> a lot of time at home right now and, and so how do we pursue those things that that we've now been given this this window of opportunity to be able to do and 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 how do we do that so if when you when you start doing and again like nobody's expecting you to be a, you know, master guitar player in the end of three weeks, but that's something you can post online, right? Like learning how to do something new, the challenges that come with learning something new, right? We get in our routines for, for so long and it's just the way we've always done things and we're efficient and life is wild and how do we possibly keep track of everything? Um, but I think that if we if we can share those moments and take advantage of, of this as an opportunity, not only does that help us in our personal lives, in our family lives, um, in our professional lives, but if, if we can switch that lens, even if it's just for part of the day, from tragedy to opportunity, opportunity for us to grow, opportunity for us to lead, opportunity for us to make a difference in other people's lives, it really gives us the ability uh, and the and and the power to to get through this, and that's what we're going to need again to to get to get through it together, even though we're far apart. So um, I've rambled on enough. Um, if there's anything, any other questions that anybody has, feel free to reach out to me via social media. Um, hopefully, if I get enough questions, we could do this again. We could have a little community chat. Maybe we'll do a Zoom so we get everybody's face, which I love. Um, or figure out a way to, to connect more regularly. For those of you that I haven't seen in a while, I love you and I can't wait to see you again. For those of you I, I, I see every day, I'm sure I'll see, see you on uh, Zoom again sometime soon. Um, and for everybody that supported the book, uh, I'm, I'm so incredibly grateful uh, for all of your kind words, for, for all of your support. It wouldn't have been possible without you. So thank you so much. Uh, be well and um, take time to, to, to have what you need and and just try, try, try every day to make somebody's day just a little bit brighter. Thank you so much. Good night.